Good afternoon. Uh, Hi. Oh, Welcome, good. everybody. Thank you all for coming. So, wow, we're surprised we've actually got content again. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we're lucky this afternoon, we can have Anhyan telling us all about the hard work he's put, put into WebKit. Then, when Stefan, it's unusual for us to actually have technical problems, so the developers to have technical problems at the guys, if everything yeah. always works. Yeah. 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 No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's another bug, it's a feature. <laughs> so, Stefan, when he's overcome these minor technical problems, is <laughs> hopefully going to be able to present this afternoon. I'd also like at some point to have the members of the Haiku uh, so, Support Association together. We really need an AGM because we don't really have a board, and we need to hopefully have a relatively quick discussion about what we want to do about that. Um, so I'd like to do that maybe about five this afternoon. Um, uh, it can be a completely open discussion, but of course any members can vote. And later, at some point, Ithamar is going to talk about the ARM port. No, tomorrow. T yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Yes, later. Yes, later. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe that Puck has blog positive. Okay, well you can ask him about it. And Ralph, are you going to talk about Team Maui? No, he's not going to talk about Team Maui. Well, most of you know what Big Eyes is like, that we have once or twice tried to have a timetable. Every time we tried to have it, we never got anywhere close to it, <laughs> which is why we never publish it anymore. <laughs> but I hope that uh, those who have come here for the first time are uh, finding people to talk to, good things to talk about, and enjoying themselves. If you need anything, please talk to me. Just get hold of me. Uh, and otherwise, I shall pass on to Adria. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, so I'm Adrien. I'm working for Anya on WebKit boards. So I didn't get your name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> can everybody hear him? <laughs> um, well, uh, you can interrupt me and ask questions because not everything is on the slides. So if you have some questions, just stop me and ask. It'll be better this way. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I started using BOS in 2005 and joined Haiku in 2009. And since last year, I've been 2013. <laughs> I've been working on WebKit for Haiku, so just one year last week. Um, okay, so um, so I uh, really show this. So uh, show you exactly what is WebKit. Um, when it is get ported, and what were the different steps in this. Um, some comparison with Firefox and Chromium, which are two other candidates for getting a web browser. And uh, some explanation about what, why uh, it takes so much time to get this running on Haiku. Okay, so I'll start by um, reminding you what, what happened in this board. So it started in 2007. And the idea was to integrate it in Haiku sources and uh, make some API for uh, web stuff in native applications. Mm -hmm. um, well, this didn't really happen. So, uh, but yeah, there was some something we got from from this time, which is a uh, build system uh, written with jump files for WebKit, so it could be integrated in Haiku. Um, uh, well, all the other ports used uh, different build systems, OS, Xcode, CMake, QMake, and AutoTools. Uh, now, uh, WebKit is using only CMake for all ports, so it became much simpler. Um, so there was a decision to use support only GCC4 because WebKit uses very advanced C++ and there was no way to get it to compile with uh, GCC2. And finally, uh, this version of WebKit used a mm. curl backend, and we switched now to a new backend, which is uh, written specifically for Haiku. Um, so, um, the port really started to work in 2009 with uh, Maxime Simon, who worked on, on it during uh, G uh, Summer of Code 2009. Uh, at this point, uh, the idea of uh, integrating into Haiku sources uh, was dropped because uh, there was support for optional packages and uh, the source of WebKit work was bigger than Haiku. Um, and uh, at the end of the summer, there was a simple browser called Haiku Launcher, 
which is just a single window with a view showing web, web pages, but it, uh, it allows to test uh, the, the, um, the engine and uh, see it running on Haiku. Um, so using this work, uh, Stefan and uh, Alexandra Lechner work on uh, WebPositive, which is an uh, actual web browser with a tab, a tablet view and uh, a lot more actual features for the web browser. Uh, there were many small and bigger fixes to WebKit. And uh, this work was done as a fork of uh, official WebKit sources and was not upstream. Uh, and in 2010, uh, Christophe Furio worked on um, the new network backend for WebKit, which, uh, uh, which is a uh, Haiku native backend. Uh, and in uh, starting in 2010, there was not much progress since uh, since then. Um, there was some work to um, update the port to newer sources of WebKit, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't put in um, production. So uh, this was uh, where things stopped basically, and uh, there was an effort upstream of port, but it was removed from WebKit because there was not enough people working on it. Okay, so now start uh, explaining what is exactly WebKit. Uh, the idea is to build um, an engine for rendering web pages. So this includes parsing uh, HTML pages, uh, CSS, JavaScript, and uh, a few other things. Um, this was a fork of KHTML from a KDA project. And it was done at first by Apple. Uh, it's used by Safari on OS X and iOS. And it's also used by uh, GTK and uh, EFL Tizen. Uh, but it's not used anymore by Chromium from Google and by Qt, which uh, forked it uh, two years ago. Um, but uh, the Blink project from Google is still sharing some, some code and some developers with WebKit. So uh, actually, they follow uh, each other quite closely. So it's not too much of a problem. OK, so. Um, uh, WebKit is made of several several layers. Uh, the first one is called uh, WTF, <coughs> the, the platform abstraction layer, and uh, it's also a, an area where they experiment with uh, features not yet in C++, uh, like uh, some kind of pointers, smart, smart pointers, and things like that. Stay from some time in this, and when the new version of C++ <laughs> uh, switch to the actual version of, of it. Uh, so the JavaScript core is uh, JavaScript interpreter. Uh, and there is a web core which is a uh, generic HTML and CSS uh, rendering part. Um, so the first two are actually quite uh, portable between platforms. It's not too difficult to get them running. Uh, in web cores, there are more s specific parts because uh, this is a part which handles drawing, font, audio, video, stuff like this, and, and also network. So uh, there is a lot of work to do in this area. Um, no. um, above of course, there is a final layer which is called WebKit or WebKit 2, or two versions of this. And this is uh, what uh, builds a native API above the uh, other layers. Yeah, so uh, in our case, no. uh, we will use the uh, first version of, web of WebKit, mm -hmm. and it's um, uh, part of brings a big web view and <coughs> other classes <coughs> like this, which are meant to be used by applications. Um, the problem with this is that uh, WebKit 1 is now deprecated. Um, it's, yeah, okay. it's maintained only by Apple because they uh, shipped an API, an API using it, and now they have to keep uh, this working. But uh, all the new things are on WebKit, on, uh, WebKit 2 side. So uh, maybe we should switch to the new one, but uh, it's Quite a lot of work to do this. Um, some words about uh, other web browsers. Um, this is a question I, I get often why, why not porting uh, Chromium or Firefox instead? Um, the, the idea is uh, we wanted to, to build a native web browser for Heku, and uh, Firefox is not, not this, it uh, always feel like a ported software. Um, Blink has a similar problem because 
they, uh, they use an um, abstraction layer which is uh, based on some drawing libraries, existing drawing libraries, front rendering, and you can get uh, this to look exactly like the native uh, ones. Um, okay, so that's why we choose to work on WebKit. Uh, uh, one one thing which is interesting about this is we do not need to port uh, all dependencies uh, like KO, Kaya, Soup, and NSS or uh, much more because in WebKit we can actually uh, make use of native APIs directly. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and, um, uh, this gave us a very good integration with uh, other parts of the system because we use the same uh, front rendering code, for example. Uh, we can use a native control look in applications, in web forms. So uh, we don't get some different kind of buttons because it's uh, we're using uh, HTML. Uh, we can integrate it with other parts of the system like uh, notifications. Um, we can use translators for decoding images when we don't. Uh, don't use uh, a well-known format like JPEG or PNG. Uh, we can also use the native media decoder. So if you install some some translator or some media decoder, WebKit can make use of it for HTML, audio, video, and images. Uh, and finally, we can also use this as a system API for applications. So there is a WebView class. You can integrate uh, some web content in a native application which would not be possible with just uh, Firefox port, for example. Uh, well, there are some downsides of this, of course. Uh, the main problem is that it's difficult to port uh, kits because we have to use uh, native uh, libraries for everything, so we have to write the code for this. That's so quite a lot of code to get running. Uh, but at the same time, it's a good test for our, our APIs. We're working on this. Uh, uh, I found there are problems, for example, in the uh, app server, which was too slow mm, when doing some things. So uh, some of these are already fixed, some are still uh, being worked on. Um, well, there are several other changes we had to make. Uh, for example, the HTTP code was much improved by testing it on various web pages. Now it can be used by native applications as well. So you can write an uh, RSS reader, for example, very easy. And use uh, this, this API to fetch some, uh, some content. Uh, there are some new web APIs like uh, geolocation support, which is also uh, available for nat native applications. So you can uh, like know, know where the computer is by scanning Wi-Fi network around it. Um, you can also get, uh, well, this is not yet, not yet working, but I'm working on it. Um, you can get information about uh, internal address and get uh, GPS coordinates from it. Uh, uh, so some something like that which could be used both by WebKit and also by native applications. Um, the main problem with porting WebKit is uh, it's a single threaded uh, system. Uh, which doesn't play well with, with uh, APIs when, which where each window is uh, a different thread. So we have we had to to get this working. Um, so the idea for this is to use uh, off screen rendering. So WebKit works in a, in a bitmap and then a bitmap is copy, copied to a window. Um, well, this worked well, but it's a bit slower than it could, it could be. Uh, in WebKit 2, uh, the change is this to use the multiple process. So each web page can be rendered in a separate process and uh, then sent back to the main application which shows it on the screen. So this could be a better solution than uh, doing everything in the application side. But uh, it's not yet working, so... Um, the other problem is uh, the use of uh, C++, which is uh, quite extensive in WebKit and it's quite a big code base, so you have uh, quite long build time. It's about one hour on one hour on a modern computer. So uh, we, you have to plan when you make change. You can just uh, uh, change some code and recompile to test it. You have to <laughs> uh, when, uh, think about what you are doing. How long did the test take to run after compile? Uh, it depends. <laughs> uh, for now, we have quite s uh, many tests which are giving timeouts, so it's quite long, but it could be a bit shorter. <laughs> I'm still trying to improve this because. It's Quite a problem. <laughs> yeah. um, 
Well, uh, now we have a build bot uh, which is building WebKit, so right. um, mm -hmm. it's you can send change to build bot and wait for it to do the work. Mm. Something else. Um, well, uh, any web web rendering engine is going to have similar problems because of this JavaScript and CSS and very complex stuff going on. So uh, it's, it's not <coughs> like there is a choice of getting a simpler code and doing the same with it. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about what I did during the year, just maybe the more interesting part. Uh, so the first step was getting getting things back on track because uh, the code was not not touched but since uh, 2010, so for three years, no one was uh, working on it. It was getting quite out of date. So the first thing I did was um, merging good sources with the current version of WebKit. So I made a check by about uh, three months of work from WebKit uh, back to an uh, old version, fixing the build and checking the it once and try, uh, merging again until I got it back, uh, back to the current version. Now I'm trying to keep it uh, merged about once a week, so it's not too much work to see what changed in WebKit and uh, make the needed modification on the side. On the side. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to rewrite the build system. Uh, we were in Jam before, but um, uh, we had to synchronize it with uh, new source files and source files which were renamed or deleted. So what I did is use the CMake build system, which is also used by other ports. Uh, this way we get uh, updates to build system for free, basically because they, they do the change for us, and we just have to write some uh, smaller part of the script to include on massive code with it. It's much simpler to follow the um, development trees this way. Uh, Apple started switching to CMake as well, so uh, uh, we should soon have one single build system in WebKit, which is quite helpful because uh, before there were uh, five different build systems for each port, and uh, we had to kill them all in, syn in synchronized. So if you want to rename a file, we have to change the um, project uh, s uh, five times on project you can't even test because there are for other platforms, so it was quite a problem. Uh, then I had to rebase our WebKit port on uh, GitHub Mirror. It was previously passed on some SVN export because WebKit is still using SVN. And uh, the problem was it was difficult to merge change from WebKit with this because uh, there was no common base in the history. It was the same commits but with different hash, so couldn't merge easily. So I, I had to rebase this and clean, up, clean it up a bit. Uh, now we, have, um, we can just use git merge to get commits from WebKit, which is much simpler. Um, well, uh, just by doing this, I, I, I already had a problem with CMake, which uh, wasn't working as, exactly like it should, so I had to fix this. Uh, I ported Ninja, which is a replacement for Make, which is uh, faster on, on this, because uh, just running Make, when there is nothing to do, will take, take five minutes just to scan the files, and okay, uh, everything is up to date. Uh, Ninja doesn't have this problem, so it's much faster, you know, in 30 seconds, to, okay, uh, everything is up to date, and I just have to, to wait for this. Uh, okay. uh, then the next step was getting the new network backend running. So before, before this, we were using uh, curl, and the idea, idea was to switch to uh, what's called the service kit, uh, which is uh, HTTP support in a um, native implementation for Haiku. Uh, uh, I did this mainly because the curl backend is not uh, actively man maintained in WebKit. Uh, all other ports are using soup. Well, all the Linux port are using soup, and Apple uses their own uh, core network stuff. Um, the problem with soup is, is ne it needs the uh, glib, which is uh, quite Im invasive. It has its own main loop and stuff like this, so it's difficult to integrate uh, with uh, existing Haiku applications. So. Um, uh, we decided to use um, our own network code, which is uh, called ServiceKit, and which is also available for other applications. Uh, this was already existing, but it needed a lot of debugging and fixes because it was not used very much before I started making use of it in WebKit. So, uh, uh, well, I fixed quite a lot of problems with the HTTP, uh, but now it's working quite well. Uh, it's also used by Haiku Depot and by Freeze. So Haiku Depot is uh, getting information about package using this code. 
from the web application and Fris is an RSS feed reader, which also use this. So uh, you can see there are already some application making use of, of this code. And have you tested all these weird common cases in HTTP with service kit? Not really. Okay. <laughs> um, I started working on this last, last week, so it's an um, HTTP test suite in WebKit, okay. uh, which we didn't run before, but uh, I started to try to get it working, but it didn't PHP, and I ported PHP and got a kernel crash, so <laughs> <laughs> well, some, some work we did on this before we can yeah. really try to work it. Sounds perfectly good for PHP. So I also did some work on uh, drawing, uh, which is also a problem with rendering web pages, and are quite complex thing up in the screen, like compositing transparency effects. And um, Absar wasn't quite ready for this. Uh, 3D transforms and gradients and Does this one. mean that the, the big action animation now runs, renders? <laughs> no, I, I think it does <laughs> currently, but... <laughs> Oops. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. only did it in SVG, in SVG because uh, Francois was <laughs> telling me I, I shouldn't use Flash. I didn't support Flash <laughs> either. So. Uh, I, sh I, should, I should have a look at this website. <laughs> well, so um, working on this, I, I made several fix bo both on WebKit side and on uh, interface kit and app server, which had some problems, for example, with gradients. Uh, if you do a gradient with some uh, values for the colors and for drawing random colors on the screen, which didn't look very nice. Um, so there is some new features in the app server and in interface kit uh, because of this. Uh, for example, we have a working clip to picture implementation. Uh, this was already available in BOS, but uh, it was not much used. And uh, we had a very slow implementation in Haiku, which was doing. Uh, one, one pixel rectangles, or one by one, was very slow because it was a uh, lot of, lot of things to compute. How are you, how are you profiling that? Um, not really doing that yet. <laughs> it's quite complex to do because uh, the drawing happened on the app server side, yeah. not in the application, so we will have to uh, add tools for this in the system. <coughs> So it's not very easy to, but uh, I can test it just by going to some web page which are very slow, so I can already see the difference. Uh, there were some big changes, so it's actually easy to see when things work correctly and it doesn't take 10 seconds to scroll the page down anymore. Uh, for smaller changes, uh, there are possibly some other optimizations, but we would have to set up some is, is, profiling is, is for this. Is <laughs> profiling support? Um, I don't know what there is in the app server profiling. Uh, we have a test app server, but I don't know if there is profiling support in it. Or uh, benchmarking drawing commands and... Uh, there, there's some... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Stefan did work on uh, thing transform support. It was needed. Um, now we have support for this in DVU, so we can transform uh, drawing. Which is quite nice. <laughs> can uh, change the scale, rotate, or things like that. Uh, and this is, of course, available to native applications as well. So it's not just for WebKit. Um, so I, I also did work on HTML5 uh, features. Um, so uh, d these ones are only for WebKit, of course, and no, uh, no native applications this time. Uh, so there is support for range input, which is a slider, uh, color picker, date and times, date and times, which are a calendar pop-up window where you can pick your date. Uh, there is support for web notifications, which use a native notification as a user interface. Uh, so yeah, there is support for web socket for geolocation, uh, video and audio support in uh, HTML5, so you can use YouTube now. And there are some other fixes like this. Uh, so last year, uh, our HTML5 test score was uh, 264 points, and now it's 419, which is much better. <laughs> did you implement a hack for YouTube, or did it work out of the board? Um, well, uh, the problem with um, media support is uh, there is no buffering. In, um, uh, the native uh, API is designed to work with uh, stream. 
And actually, the implementation cast it to a C cable source yeah. and try to save on it. No, so but I meant basically so because uh, YouTube yeah. tends to give you flash playback for some videos which oh, okay. are yeah. available using HTML5. Yeah, well, Did you, you can use some can JavaScript to convert No, I didn't do that, that but you, you can do it manually. You can. Okay. So it's a passion. YouTube settings, or you can yeah, I know this. that's so a Morpho SD for yeah, the maybe, uh, maybe we could uh, AWZ or something like that. It's called um, actually inserts JavaScript into YouTube, so it works okay. out the box of any video. <laughs> we could do that too, maybe. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> or steal their JavaScript. I think it's BSD yeah. license. <laughs> um, I also did quite a lot of work on test suites for WebKit. Uh, there is a lot of tests for everything: uh, HTML, CSS, uh, network. So um, we didn't have uh, any way to run them in the Haiku port. So I work in uh, an application which is called uh, Dump Render Tree. Uh, this is uh, an application that uses WebKit, uh, parses a web page and ra renders a text version of it with a tree of um, all the elements and where they position um, sort of information like this. Uh, the test suite used this to compare with the reference of the web page of how it should be parsed and compares with the actual uh, processing from from our port and tries to find the def differences. So uh, this is how the test, the test suite works. Uh, some tests are uh, also done as PNG files. There is a reference feature and uh, the rendering must match uh, the reference. Mm -hmm. um, well, so this is working, but uh, now we need to go through the list of tests. Mm, a lot of them are failing and we have to identify uh, we are using reference from other ports. There is a generic set of references, but for example, when you have a native uh, button, uh, it looks like a hyper button with the reference doesn't, so you have to uh, take care of this and generate a uh, special uh, PNG file for the references. Uh, there are differences with uh, font metrics, which are not, not exactly the same. So sometimes there is something which is uh, just one pixel bigger and it changes uh, the rendering of the page. So. We have to review each of the tests and see if uh, uh, the rendering we have, uh, even if it's different from the references, maybe it's still correct. So we have to generate special reference for all parts. And it's quite a lot of work to do this for each test one, one by one, understand what, what the test is trying to do and how it should really look like, and make a decision for this. Um, while working on uh, the native part, so on the Haiku side of things, I also try to write some CP unit tests. Uh, we have a test framework in Haiku which is not much used, unfortunately, so uh, trying to, um, to work on this as well. So I wrote tests from, for app server drawing, for network. Um, I also did some side work on local kit because I had to, to use it to format dates in the date and time picker. So I also wrote some native tests for this. So I, I can make sure that the native API, API is working before I go with the uh, WebKit implementation, which uses it. Okay, so I think that's it. Yeah, so there's a list of uh, future work to do. Um, so there are still uh, problems with uh, rendering and with the network uh, support, so I'll continue to uh, try to identify the problems and fix them. Uh, there is some not very clean code, uh, for example, the video support. It's uh, some quick test I did, and it worked, so I left it this way, but it could be improved, and uh, MediaKit could get actual streaming support with um, a smarter uh, buffering system, and it will allow to support uh, seeking, for example. Uh, it's not possible if you try to seek a uh, video on YouTube, it won't work, because uh, we're not uh, managing the buffers properly. And continuing to work on the test suites, we continue to work on HTML5. Uh, I, I didn't start work on plugins yet. Uh, there is uh, support for Netscape plugins. And, uh, well, I didn't uh, didn't really try it. We have only, a, I think the only plugin we have on Haiku is a very old Flash version, but uh, I'm not sure it could even run. And, well, I didn't have any other use for plugins yet. And there is uh, some work on localization on WebKit. Uh, for example, all the pop-up menus are uh, inside the WebKit world and currently they are all in English. All the error messages are in English, so we have some work to do uh, to um, translate it. And just uh, need the um, calls to our, our native API for translation and putting this on the website for translation. Uh, I also started to upstream the changes again. So I started by 
uh, well, I asked the uh, WebKit team about this, and they didn't want us to try to upstream all of our sources because, uh, well, I'm working alone on this, and so there will be no one to review my batches. So, so the idea is to, port to first upstream um, the parts which are uh, changing the cross platforms uh, part of WebKit. And uh, then later we can see about uh, Haiku specific parts. <coughs> okay, so no, more talk. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I started a bit of work on WebKit 2, which is a multi process API for WebKit. Uh, it would be nice to use it because it's a current API for WebKit and they are uh, deprecating uh, WebKit version 1. So uh, we have to make a switch to this, but it's uh, quite a lot of work to uh, move things from uh, our WebKit to WebCore, so the WebKit 2 uh, implementation can also use them, and cleaning up of the other parts of the code which were not used in WebKit 1, so there's quite a lot of things to do now. We just, just started on it. Um, the nice thing about it is it will allow us to split the, um, the rendering work on a separate uh, application. Uh, so the user interface will not lock up when um, the kit is rendering a page, for example. Uh, we have this, this problem for uh, some pages which are slow to render, and if you try to scroll, uh, it's very, very slow because it has to wait for the new page rendering to be ready. And while it does this, the window is completely locked, blocked, so it's not very nice. Uh, we would like to finalize the uh, BWebView API. Uh, so other, other applications can use uh, HTML rendering. Um, well, uh, right now there are several problems with it. It needs a specific subclass of B application to handle some global messages and stuff like that. So it's not just a view you could put in any application and get some HTML rendering. So uh, we'd like to clean this up so we can get uh, a view which just works and. Uh, don't have to change the whole application to integrate it. Um, finally, I would like to get more people involved in this because uh, for now I'm, I'm quite alone with this and uh, sometimes I do some change and I would like some review and there is no one to ask for it because no one uh, really knows the uh, WebKit side of things. So <laughs> or if, I, if I go to the WebKit guys, I will tell, tell me that I don't know about Haiku and Kafu and my colleagues are. So, <laughs> so it's quite a problem. And also, there are some, some things that uh, I can't do by myself because I don't know how, how to do them. So maybe people with different knowledge could, mm, could help more on this. Okay, um, so that's the last, last slide, I think. Mm. Okay, so uh, do you have more, more questions? Or <laughs>